The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. for the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise.
Let us pray. Lord God, by the leading of a star, you once made known to the nations your one and only Son. Guide us also, who know him now by faith, to come at last to the perfect joy of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Today we celebrate the festival of Epiphany, which is known as the Gentile Christmas. Our Old Testament lesson from Isaiah chapter 60, beginning with verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is dawning upon you. Look, darkness covers the earth, and deep darkness covers the peoples, but the Lord will dawn upon you, and his glory will be seen over you. Nations will walk to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Look up. Look all around and see, all of them have been gathered. They are coming to you. Your sons will come from far away, and people will carry your daughters on their side. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will race with excitement and burst with joy. For great riches from the sea will be delivered to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. Caravans of camels will cover your land young camels from Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba will come. They will carry gold and incense, and they will announce the good news of the praise of the Lord. This is the word of our God. Our epistle lesson from Ephesians chapter 3, beginning with verse 2. Surely you have heard of the administration of God's grace given to me for you, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. When you read this, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. This mystery was not made known to people in past generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that in Christ Jesus... The Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and people who also share in the promise through the gospel. I became a servant of this gospel, in keeping with the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. To me, even though I am the very least of all the saints, was given this grace to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to enlighten everyone about the administration of this mystery. In past ages, this mystery remained hidden in God, who created all things. He did this so that, through the church, the multifaceted wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was done according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, we can freely approach God with confidence through faith in him. This is the word of our God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. This will also serve as our sermon text this morning. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, when Herod was king, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? 
We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was alarmed, and all Jerusalem with him. He gathered together all the people's chief priests and experts in the law. He asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, because this was written through the prophet, You, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not least among the rulers of Judah, because out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report to me so that I may also go and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. When the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stood over the, until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with overwhelming joy. After they went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Since they had been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. At this time, we'd like to invite forward the new members who will be welcomed into our congregation this morning. Dear members of St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church, these fellow Christians, having been baptized and instructed in the teachings of, of the Word of God, desire to become members of this congregation. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, Our Lord Jesus Christ promises to confess before his Father in heaven those who faithfully confess him on earth. You have come before this Christian congregation to declare your faith and to unite with us in Christian love and fellowship. Therefore, lift up your hearts to the God of all grace and joyfully answer these questions. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe that the teaching of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you have learned to know it from Luther's small catechism, is faithful and true to the Word of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend to continue steadfast in the true Christian faith, be diligent in the use of God's Word and sacraments, and lead a godly life even to death? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help me. Will you support with your prayers, time, talents, and offerings the work our Lord has given to this congregation? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Having heard your promises, we, the members of St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church, receive you in fellowship and love and invite you to share in our worship and mission in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Ryan Jarevsky, Michael and Lindsay Penskoffer, and Nick and Megan Connors with their children. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, author and perfecter of our faith, In mercy, you joined these brothers and sisters in Christ to your church when they were born again of water and the Spirit. In mercy, you taught them your saving truth. Grant that they may offer themselves as living sacrifices to you as their spiritual act of worship. Transform them by the renewing of their minds so that they will not conform to the pattern of this world. Help us live in love and harmony with one another and work together in serving you. Keep us united in your spirit and bring us at last to your eternal kingdom where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We pray. Lord, through your word, enlighten our hearts to trust in Jesus, our King. Amen. Maybe this Christmas season you saw a sign, maybe the MLS sign down the road that said, Wise men still seek him. Maybe you also saw a sign paid for by the American Atheists Incorporated that had a picture of the three wise men on camels, and it says on the top, Come on, you know it's a myth. This season, celebrate reason. The implication, if you really are wise, you won't seek Jesus. I think they might be right. If you take their definition of wisdom, if you think that human reason is the best thing ever, that people can figure everything out and you don't need to trust some type of higher power, then yeah, wise men don't seek Jesus. Which is why it's a pretty cool thing that the wise men in our reading today aren't actually that wise. In fact, there's a lot of things that we sing or say about the wise men that don't seem to be true. Maybe you know the song, We three kings of Orient are. Were there three? There were three gifts, but Matthew doesn't tell us that there were necessarily just three wise men. There could have been more. We three kings Were they kings? They're not called kings. Herod doesn't treat them like kings. He treats them like servants. And what are they called? They're called magi. The Greek word magoi, often translated as wise men. But magi weren't necessarily wise. They were astrologers. They were advisors. But the only other time we see magi in the Bible, they don't seem very smart at all. In the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, a king has a terrible dream and he gathers together all his wise men and he says, hey, smart guys, tell me my dream and tell me what it means. And the wise men say, we can't. (laughs) We're not that smart. And the prophet Daniel has to come and say, only God can reveal mysteries. So there might not be three, they might not be kings, they may not be all that wise, but in what Daniel said in that first situation with wise men, we're pointed to the most important thing that we do know about the wise men. God had revealed to them a mystery. God had revealed to them a mystery. And because God revealed this mystery to them, these wise men were glad to be fools. They were glad to be foolish enough to seek the true king. And they were foolish enough to worship the true king. And today, we hope to be that foolish too. Right away, at the start of our account in Matthew, the wise men don't seem very smart. We read, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, when Herod was king, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was alarmed, and all Jerusalem with him. The wise men let a star lead them on a long and difficult journey to a king of the Jews. And they weren't Jews. They were Gentiles. They were people who weren't Jewish. And yet they came to worship a Jewish king. Not only that, but they came to King Herod to ask him where he was. And you can tell by Herod's reaction and the reaction of all of Jerusalem that this wasn't a very wise thing to do. When King Herod heard they were looking for a king, he was alarmed. And all Jerusalem with him. It's a bad idea to go to King Herod because he was one of the most bloodthirsty and powerful rulers this part of the world had ever known. 
If you think the tension in the Middle East right now is bad, you should have been there that day. When King Herod, who already had killed three of his sons because he was scared of them taking his throne, you should have seen the tension when King Herod heard, hey, there's a new king in town. Herod was alarmed and all Jerusalem with him because they knew that this meant danger. This meant tension. And the smart people knew that. After the wise men came to Herod, Herod gathered together all those smart people, all the chief priests and experts in the Bible, to find out where this baby would be born, where this king would be. And they knew. They look it up. They say, in nearby Bethlehem of Judea, because the prophecy says, you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not least among the rulers of Judah, because out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. They knew. They were smart people. They said, just down the road in Bethlehem, there's going to be a new king. And then they did nothing. They didn't act on it. They didn't say, hey, wise men, we'll go with you to go worship this new king. No, they did something smart. Nothing. They didn't go looking for the new king because they knew if it did, it would bring danger into their lives. It would bring tension with them and King Herod. So they did nothing. And if you want to be wise, do that. If you want to be wise today, stop seeking Jesus. It's a bad idea. Christians around the world know that. Christians that seek Jesus and then are persecuted even to the point of death, is that really a good idea? You said this morning that you would be faithful to Jesus to the point of death. Is that a good idea? Or is that unreasonable? All of us are here seeking Jesus, but that's going to bring tension. It might not bring persecution and death like other parts of the world, but it probably will bring tension between you and family members or you and friends when you say this is what Jesus says and they don't like it. It'll bring tension in your life when God's word says something that just doesn't seem right and your human reason says, no, I don't think that could be it. Or it says, okay, that's what the Bible says, but I don't want to follow it. That's tension. What tension it brings in our life when God's word says there's only place for one person on the throne of our heart and it's Jesus, not us. How foolish it seems to come today and confess our sins, confessing that I'm not the best person to be on the throne of my heart, and then looking to Jesus to rule with his grace and his forgiveness. It's really foolish. And yet the wise men were happy to do it. The wise men were happy to be fools, happy to go through danger and tension to go seek Jesus, because God had revealed to them the mystery. The mystery that Paul talks about in Ephesians, in our reading for today, Paul said, the mystery is this, that in Christ Jesus, the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and people who also share in the promise through the gospel. It's kind of exciting when you find out that a gift is for you. A few weeks ago, my son turned one before Christmas, and all of the presents were for him. And you can imagine how excited my two-year-old daughter was about that. Oh, is that present for me? No. Is that present for me? No. You can imagine how excited she was on Christmas. Is that big, huge present from Grandma and Grandpa for me? Yes. And she didn't care how foolish she looked when she ran to that present and started ripping it open. That's what the wise men were doing. They had found out that this promised king of the Jews was a king that was for them. They had found out that this person who would shepherd my people Israel was going to be their shepherd. They found out that everyone who believes in this king is made part of the spiritual Israel. And so they went 
and they didn't care how foolish they seemed to follow a star so far to Jerusalem to meet a dead end and then have scriptures lead them to a tiny town called Bethlehem. They didn't care how foolish it seemed. And today, God is guiding you to be that foolish too. Not through a star, but through his word. His word that tells you something unreasonable, that through baptism you were made part of God's people. And that means that the king of the Jews is your king. God's word tells you something that sounds so foolish, that the shepherd of my people Israel, Jesus, is the best person to shepherd you in your life, to rule in your heart. That God himself, who came as a human, which seems so foolish, came to bring you the most unreasonable riches of salvation. Because that gift is yours. Because a gift better than any other gift under the tree has a label that has your name on it. Be foolish. Seek Jesus. Seek that gift of salvation that is yours through him. And as you seek him, worship him like the wise men did. After listening to the king, the wise men went on their way. Then the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stood still over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with overwhelming joy. After they went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. God guided the wise men through the scriptures and that star to Bethlehem. And if they were wise, if they were using their human reason, they would have said, Psh, there couldn't be a king here. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, this isn't a place for a king. I don't see a palace. All I see is a normal-looking child in a house with a teenage mother. But God had revealed to them the mystery that this child was God-made flesh, come into the world to save them from their false reason, to save them from their sins, to be their king. And so what did they do? They set aside their reason and they bowed before this child as if he were God, because he was, and they offered him gifts. It's unreasonable that you're here today. And yet God has revealed to you a mystery Not that you have to go to Jerusalem or go to Bethlehem to go find Jesus. The mystery is that Jesus is here. He's come to you. Just as real as he was there in front of the wise men, he is here today. And that seems so unreasonable. How could Jesus be here as we sing songs, as we read the Bible, as we eat a little bread and a little wine? How could Jesus be here? But God's word reveals the mystery that as we gather together in Jesus' name, as we sing about him, as we hear about him, as we talk about him, Jesus comes, our true king, with his salvation. It seems unreasonable that a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine could be our Savior coming to us, but it's true. It's a present, gift-wrapped for you, the present of Jesus himself, Come with his body and blood to forgive your sins. So come to him as he comes to you and offer him gifts. And you might not give him gold, frankincense, and myrrh, though if somebody brought a bar of gold today, go ahead and put that in the offering plate. That's fine. Instead, you might bring today your human reason. Offer that to him. Offer to Jesus all of those moments where your mind says, I don't think that could be right, God. I don't think God's word could be correct. Offer that to him. Sacrifice your human reason to him to worship the one who is beyond reason and has given you riches beyond reason. And maybe offer him your peace and quiet because seeking him will bring danger and tension in your life. Offer him the peace and happiness you could have had if you would have ignored him. Offer him that, to come to him like a fool, to worship him. 
We three kings. I think the wise men or the wise fools would be okay with us changing the lyrics. We three fools. But maybe they hope we'd change it a little more. How many people are here today? A hundred or so? We 100 fools of Michigan are not following a star, but following God's word. Foolish enough to seek and worship our true king, because by God's grace, fools still seek him. Amen. The Lord will shine over you, and his glory will appear over you. Amen. We now confess our faith in that king together with the words of the Nicene Creed. It's found on page 31. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of light, you would like to enlighten all through the gospel to find their salvation in Jesus. Bless your word and the preaching of the gospel in all the world that multitudes from every nation under heaven may come to faith in Jesus. Give us the wisdom of the wise men, wisdom to bow our hearts and minds before the true king, to offer him gifts, and to live for him. And we join to pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.